good morning. And welcome to another episode of Ask Ellie. Your questions answered and intuitive insights. So today on November 10th, after the historic election, um, 2020, I'm going to be speaking about numerology and the art of listening for the gold and what that means. But first we're going to take our attention to numerology. And so um, if there's anybody who has any questions, feel free to type them into the chat or call in. And we're here and ready to begin. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Ellie Molina. I am a psychic. I'm a former educator. I'm an Amazon best-selling author. And I am also an intuitive consultant. And I love numerology and astrology. So today, let's get started. Numerology is, for those of you unfamiliar with numerology, numerology is using numbers, numbers of letters, numbers of dates, to look for what the Chaldeans historically refer to as the most auspicious numbers and dates to do things, whether it's an event that we're planning, which leads me right into a question that was asked by BK out of Florida. And her question was, Ellie, I'm looking to launch my new business. And I am looking for the most auspicious days, which to do so. And BK, this is a wonderful question. I believe in looking for the most auspicious days to launch a business as well, or to do anything, be it a wedding, an engagement, a move-in, applying for a new job, signing a contract. So there are so many wonderful things that we can play with this, um, numerology uh, to enhance our opportunities of making things better for us. And so the system that I love to use, and I'm not answering your question, BK, for many reasons, and that is I don't know when you want to launch your business. So if I give you if I give you dates now this month, that would be great for you to launch your business and you're not going to be ready until January. Well, then um, that really wouldn't... Um, really wouldn't work for us. So anyway, really quick question, but you can send me an email at ellie at elliemolina.com and I will, we could set up a session for you. You'll receive a 20% discount. Just mention that you're coming through the podcast. And um, okay, I got a question here from Bright Future 25 and it says, good morning. What do you think about angel numbers? Are these really signs from the universe? So um, bright future, this is a question of belief. And so I believe that um, it's twofold again. So like I said, this is a personal belief response bright future and so 25 and so therefore i'm not looking to impact your belief system at all um but i do believe that our reticular activating system picks that's where we notice something you know if i say look for yellow cars and all of a sudden you hadn't been looking for yellow cars now you see yellow cars and so your reticular activating system starts to program you to certain numbers. And again, this gets that we're tapped into the collective consciousness. So therefore, many, many people will look at 1111, they'll look at the clock, and then they'll say, oh, wow, it's 1111, and they'll be conscious of it. And then they'll look at something and they'll say 333. It's like, oh my God, that's my angel number. And so here's the thing, um, Brightville Future 25, we are constantly looking at numbers all day long. And we're looking at the clock all day long. However, because our reticular activating system is not programmed to pay attention to right now 1004, as I'm looking over here, that to me is nothing. Uh, I won't even think about it. My reticular activating system is not activated. I will not give it any meaning. 
only if I were to look at the clock in a few minutes and I were to say 11, 11, I was like, oh, wow, 11, 11, this is a sign. I'm going to make it mean something. So these are, that's my personal, my personal take on, on, um, why we gravitate towards certain numbers, especially the angel numbers. And with angel numbers, again, I'm going to be honest with you, bright, few, bright, bright, full future. I don't know enough about who created the angel numbers. I haven't done any research on that. I do not know where they come from historically, who then designated that 333 was going to be this number or 222 was going to be that number. So I have no historical relationship to angel numbers. I do know that I rely very, very heavily on the, I rely solely on the Chaldean because the Chaldean, the Chaldeans were such a strong nation um, from such a long time ago. And we'll talk a little bit about them in a second. I just want to greet some people here. Good morning, Thomas. Um, we've got a qu question over here. I'm going to just answer this one quickly and then circle back to some more numerology. Uh, question, I have a lot going on, packing to leave the country, working on a project around the home and settling my mother's estate. Two questions, um, the multi-level marketing company is asking me to join this week. Is it a good time or should I wait, um, wait second the state to whom I donated my, Oh, oh, or should I wait? Okay, sorry. Um, so is this a good time or should I wait? All right, um, let's take a look at that. Uh, number one question for you is how long are you planning on leaving, being away from the country? This will determine, so here's the thing with network marketing. This is not a numerical question because I can give you some great dates numeral, numerologically. Um, however, the question is with, with um, oh, you'll be gone for two months. Okay, so here's the thing with network marketing, Thomas. It's action, okay? So if you pick a really great day to start right now, so take, for example, you join on November 14th. Well, can you work the company? Can you work your network marketing? Can you get yourself enthusiastic around it and so that you can start generating it? So um, this is a really great day. The other thing, I would probably tell you to wait until December 14th, which is a new moon, total solar eclipse in Sagittarius, we have a Venus sextile. Oh, God, you got such great days in December. I'm going to give you some right now. You got a new moon, total solar eclipse in, in on the 14th of December. You have Venus will be sextile Jupiter. Mercury is going to be trine Mars. Ooh, la, la. So these total essential sen sensational planets are going to coincide with the eclipse. Mars is going to be in Aries, trying the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, and sextile to Saturn, Jupiter. Jupiter will be close to Pluto. This is a wonderful day. Plus it's a new moon, solar eclipse. Fabulous day. Another great day. Another, oh, and Thomas says they are all over the world. Well, this is a great opportunity. Uh, another, another um, fabulous day, which would probably be my first choice would be then the sun entering Capricorn on the winter solstice, which is the December 21st. You have Jupiter conjunct Saturn. This is a five star days where these, these planets meet every 20 years. And then they set the tone for what's to come in society, the Pluto conjunct Saturn. This is also the grand mutation. All right. So the switch is going to be from the earth and the industrial age. We're going to go to air and to the digital age until 20, 20, 2219, 2219. If you put something into disciplinary action, oh, that sounds bad. If you put something into a disciplined action where you take action every single day in dreaming up your dream to allow your lofty goal to come into completion. Oh, Thomas, this is the day to start. This is a stellar five star day. Then if I join Wednesday, I will be higher up. That is true. Um, totally up to you. You know, this is your life, what you want to do with it. 
If you join on the 12th, you have Jupiter conjunct Pluto, fantastic day also, a day of two financial planets, which occurs every 13 years. So then I would say, hey, you know what? If you want to start now, you want to start this month, you want to start soon, start on the 12th. That will be in two days. So a uh, fabulous day to start. Okay, any questions on that one? Um, okay, we've got a lot of people joining us today. And welcome, 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 especially if this is your first time um, in the live studio. I'm very happy to have you here and welcome. So let's get back to a little bit of numerology. I'm going to give you some great dates for this month also to work with. So the Chaldeans just backtracking because this is really the system that I would suggest that you use. This the Cal Chaldea was a country, a state that existed between the late 10th and early 9th and mid 6th BC. All right. Um, this was then people who were ass um, assimilated into Babylonian into and they were Semitic speaking. Um, this is a they came up with the historians talk about them as the Chaldean dynasty, and they came up with a phenomenal system of numerology. And their system of numerology has been the system that is still used by many professional numerologists to this day. They came up with something that is historically sound. So before I turn this into a um, podcast history lesson as a former educator, you could just go online and it's C-H-A-L-D-E-A, -E Chaldea, and you could look them up. And then you can also look up the Chaldean numerology system, which will give you the numbers that I'm going to be talking about today and their meanings. And so the way that the Chaldeans do their numerology is, is a little different than um, other forms of numerology that I've seen online and in my work. And some places just add up all the numbers, cross, and so be it. And with the Chaldeans, there's, there, um, you have your single numbers and then you have your double numbers. And one number that never gets um, reduced to anything is the number 11. The 11 is a master number. It stays as an 11. So if you were born, let's just take a look at today. Today is November 10th, 2020. So how would the Chaldeans add up this? They'd add it up across with an 11 for November. So that would stay 11. The 10 would be reduced to a 1. And then 2020 is reduced to a 4. So you'd be adding 11 plus 1 plus 4, which would give you um, 11 plus 5, which gives you 16. <laughs> OK. So um, then the Chaldeans believe that each one of these are um, associated with particular meaning. And it's interesting because the um, tarot cards, tarot cards, are also based on Chaldean numerology. And so the number 16, even in tarot or tarot, whichever one you want to call that, um, the number 16 is the tower card. And the tower card um, is the picture of the tower card, of course, is uh, the Chaldeans referred this as a tower struck by lightning from which man is falling with a crown on his head. So it warns of strange fatality and dangers of accidents and defeat of the plan. If the name equals 16, then it would be wise to change the spelling of your name. And if your birth date is the 16, then you want to look at some of the other numbers in your in your chart and in your, your name. Um, on the 16th, we have to listen to the voice within. There's always danger through dreams and intuition. And so we have to pay attention. The inner voice um, on the number 16 must not be ignored. And um, it was interesting because historically, Abraham Lincoln was a number 16. And he was warned repeatedly of his potential assassination through his dreams. Um, and then there were also mediums brought into the White House, as told by Mary Todd Lincoln. But he didn't pay attention to any of these warnings. And he refused to um, take pay necessary precautions or attentions. 
uh, to what was coming. Now, again, we don't know. Had he paid attention to these inner voices? Had he paid attention to any of this? Perhaps he would have lived longer. We don't know. That's all speculation. But it is interesting to see how he coincided with the num his birth, his name number, I'm sorry, coincided with the number 16. So today is a 16. So what does that mean? What does that equate to for us? It means that we have to be a, be highly vigilant on this day of listening to our intuition, not using this day to start a new project. Um, basically, really lay not I wouldn't say laying low. That's you know again, anybody's going to do whatever they're going to do. So, but this is the kind of day not to start a new project, and it's not even astrologically really a great particularly star aligned day to start a new project. So if you are um, just, if you are looking to do something new on this day, uh, just wait, <laughs> just wait and listen to your intuition. Today would not be the day that I would join a new network marketing company or put my business out there to the world to start it. That would not be my day. Okay. The days that you're looking for this month astrologically, um, in terms of astrology and numerology, one day, as we spoke about, is the 12th of November. Again, that is a great day. And if we want to look at the numerology on that one, we would look at 11 plus 12, which is a 3, plus our 4. And so 11 and 7 brings us to the 18. So now the 18 is a spiritual material conflict number. Um, it has difficulty in the translation because it is the number of Jesus. So in some ways we can say, well, the 18 is strives to bring us to spirituality. Um, the 18 is also associated with war, social upheaval, revolutions. Sometimes it is um, a day that there can be treachery. So the 18th numerology, in numerology is not again not the best day but it does have it does have a lesson that teaches us so as i was saying before to thomas this is a wonderful day in terms of the planets to go out and um to go out and start your network marketing business this is a wonderful day numer according to numerology it would be something that you would have to weigh that you'd have to weigh that on a personal note if that's the day that you were going to start if i were going to be if it were me i would not start on the 12th no matter how great the planets were because i give more credence to believe it or not i give more credence to numerology than i do to astrology even though i love astrology but there's a, a really big power in numerology in terms of our personal vibration and the numbers vibrating at a particular level and a particular frequency all right, let's take a look at the 14th of November. So again, we take an 11, which we don't break down, and we take a five, and then we take a four, and 16 and four gives us a 20. So now the 20 is known as the awakening. So this, again, a very peculiar type of energy. Sometimes with an awakening, we have an awakening, and this is just so wonderful, or sometimes it also shows us that there, because of the awakening, we have problems that come into our life. Obstacles are shown to us so that we can have the awakening. So this, again, is very personal if you want to be using that as your particular day, um, numerology or astrology. Ideally, you want to have your numerology and your astrology coincide with one another. Those are the stellar days. And for that, you'd have to have an, um, you'd have to really get yourself an ephemeris or a calendar or get online to find out what the days are planetary wise and then work with those days and then work with them in numerology. So now let's just take a really curious moment and look over here just because I've got curiosity, Thomas, and I'd like to look at December 2021. 20, so December 21, we would start with a 12, and then we do a 21, and then we do four for 2020. Now the 21 itself 
happens to be a stellar day in numerology, just that day alone. That is called the crown of the Magi. It is the universe. This promises general success, advancement, honors, awards, elevation in life and career. It indicates victory after a long struggle. Um, there has been lots of soul testing and determination. However, doing things on the 21st, an entity is blessed with financial victory over all odds and opposition. It is a most fortunate number of karmic reward. So now let's just see how this how this plays out fully. So 12 and 21, we're looking at three plus three plus four, and that is a 10, right? If I'm doing my math right, so no, yes, six and four is 10. So 10 gets back to the number one, and the number one is the beginning. It is the wheel of fortune. It is symbolized by Isis and Osiris. Um, this is known for good or evil, of course, but it is the language, of, it is the number of love and light. So for me, if I were going to be doing my network marketing company, I'd be waiting until December 21st. That's me, but I cannot tell anybody what to do. So if you're operating, okay, you know, I'll be higher up on the chain and that's operating out of fear. So the question becomes, do you want to operate out of fear or light and love? And if you want to operate out of light and love as a professional numerologist, psychic, intuitive, I'm going to tell you, operate out of light and love and wait till the 21st to sign up for that amazing opportunity and then bring that light and love to the world. Okay, um, questions for anybody right now. If anybody has a numerology question, then let's go to it. Oh, you're welcome, Thomas. You're welcome. Anybody here? You can type in your questions if you'd like to, uh, if that's something that you'd like to do, and I will see them and read them, or you can call them in live right now. Okay, anybody want to call in a question live? All right. So now with this being said, the second half of this call, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a little, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about listening for the gold. So when we listen, if you think about elementary school, you know, we were encouraged as children to frantically be waving our hands. And most people are always so, and, you've heard this before, most people are so ready to think about what it is that they're going to be saying or what they're going to be contributing that they do not listen to what is being said. And this starts with the way that we are trained in school as children, because we are, if you think back, we're rewarded for participating waving your hand in the classroom frantically. Oh, oh, me, 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 pick me, pick me. And all during that time, pick me, pick me. Nobody's listening to what's being said. Everyone's rehearsing what they're going to say. Think about it, even when you're in organizations and group meetings and people are asking or introducing themselves and you know that they're going around round robin, it's gonna be your time to speak. And all you're thinking of is, what am I gonna say? You got the right words going, you're practicing your speech in your head. Hi, I'm Julie and I'm a, right, and you don't even know who the person was in front of you or next to you or who spoke before you. So in the art of listening, when I say we listen for the gold, the first thing that we have to do is become conscious, just consciously aware that, hey, we're not, I'm not listening and there's nothing wrong, there's nothing right, I'm just not listening. I haven't been taught how to listen. I haven't been taught what it takes to listen. So I'm going to practice listening. Well, there's a couple of really great exercises, and that is to allow people to finish their sentences. If you've ever noticed, people are constantly interrupting each other. You see it in daily conversation. You see it in TV shows. Nobody grants the other person enough being, enough respect to allow them to finish answering their question or even finish their sentence. And um, this is just not to be political, but if anybody watched the debate between um, 
Kamala Harris and and um, Mike Pence when she just looked at him and and told him she wanted to finish her sentence. I forget the exact words that she used, but to me, um, some practicing who it's very important in my life to listen. That was such a pivotal moment for me. It was a stellar moment where she just asked him, I'd like to finish speaking. And that kind of not, not looking to put the light, the spotlight on Pence over here, but that is just an indicator of the way that we've been taught and raised that if we're loud and we talk louder, someone will listen. If we interrupt, they're going to listen to us. And granted, when we start paying attention to allowing others just to finish their sentences, just to allow them to complete the thought, what we're doing is we're honoring them. And when they allow us to complete our sentences, they're honoring us. So we're gifting them something. This becomes an act of generosity. And of course, you know, there's so many different ways of of being generous, but by listening to someone, we're respecting their opinions, even if they're different from ours. We're giving them an opportunity to be heard. So many people have these stories, you know, nobody listens to me, nobody hears me. And, it, you know, it's so unfortunate because it's not that no one's listening to a particular person, it's that the listener the person that they're speaking to hasn't been trained in listening. So they're just doing the thing that they know how to do, which is interrupt and speak over them. So, and then the person, the narrator who is telling themselves, oh, nobody listens to me, they start to develop a story and they look for evidence. And before long, you've got someone who doesn't want to speak up, is afraid to speak up, develops throat cancer, or all kinds of other problems. And that's all from a self-created story because they've been interacting with people who haven't been taught how to listen. It's again, it brings me back to that light switch concept that I spoke about recently. If you didn't know that turning on the switch in a room could provide electricity, then you'd be in the dark all the time or running around in the dark after the lights went out. And it's the same thing with listening. No one teaches children or even adults at, a, at any age what it takes to be an active listener listening for the gold. And so again, we want to bring that conscious awareness to that um, and start to pay attention for what other people are saying and what they're not saying. And if they're constantly having longer monologues, they're looking for it. They're looking to say something. So this week, pay attention. This is just my suggestion. Pay attention to where you're granting people your gift of listening to them, allow them to complete their sentences. You'll feel so much better about yourself and they'll feel so much better about being heard. It's a gift that gives back to you. Okay, um, got a couple minutes left and I see that uh, there are, there's a question over here for me from Dozer. Hello, Ellie. I keep seeing sequence numbers on the clock. For example, 10, 10, 3, 3, 3, certain, no, certain order. These are indications my relatives who have passed. Wait, um, are these indications my relatives who have passed trying to tell me something? Thank you, Cindy. Hey, Cindy, hi. Um, at the beginning um, of the podcast, I went into this a little bit. So I'm, I went into this. So I'm going to just really re, um, rephrase it. The sequ sequential numbers that you're seeing are based on your reticular activating system. So the brain goes to looking at certain numbers. Like if I say to you, pay attention, Cindy, now to all yellow cars. And all of a sudden, you see yellow cars. And I ask you, how many red cars did you see? And you're going to say, wow, gee, I don't know. Because your reticular activating system of your brain was not on for red cars. It was looking for yellow cars. And so right now you programmed, you've programmed yourself to pay attention to certain numbers that are going to keep showing up. And then you, of course, are the one to ascribe the meaning to them. So we are all meaning making machines and we ascribe meaning to everything. And so therefore, this is perfect. If you know, if you're deceased relatives are looking to reach you and this is where they can get in to your conscious awareness. They can grab your attention by the, using these numbers and your reticular activating system by all means, go for it. Everybody has um, 
everybody has a certain, well, and I won't say that. What I want to say is this, <laughs> the people on the other side, the entities on the other side have a way to grab your awareness and your intention when they want to communicate with you. And so if they know that you'll pay attention to these um, sequential numbers, that's when they'll come in because they know that they can get your attention. For me personally, I get the attention when a picture falls or a picture drops down. That's my sign that I've got to pay attention to the other side. That's when I listen. And that's what catches me. So pay attention. This is a great question, Cindy. So really pay attention to what are your signs from the other side? And what does the other side do to get you to listen? So with that today, I want to thank you all for being on this live podcast. I have really enjoyed the interaction, even though I'm reading your questions out loud. But in the future, if you have a headset, you can just call on in. I'd like to tell you about um, a new moon white blessing that I do on certain dates. And I'm doing the new moon white blessing on November 14th. You can find out all about this on my website. and. Um, I wish you a phenomenal week and send in your questions at Ellie, elliemolina.com and keep the conversations going. Share the podcast, tell people what you've learned, check out the Chaldeans um, and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Much love, many blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.